Hi, welcome. This is chapter 12 of the Bounty Park, The Siege. And we're gonna jump right into the action. Today we have the nerd of the week, Gareth Griffiths, who is one of the founders of the Amp Jam Con. And uh, it's it's not something that uh, people try to trick you do, uh, doing into something. It's an alternative movie poster convention that was hosted digitally i was part of it luckily we had james on also with the more art gallery this is the, the founding day when we had it on so there's some really good times and uh, there will be stuff coming in the future right gareth uh yeah i i can't tell you what yet partly because i don't know but yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good always always having a plan i can see that but our episode has definitely a plan and it's by directed by carl weathers uh aka grief kaga and uh, the episode length is 39 minutes with the little intro, of course. And I think, by the way, b before we get into what we liked about the episode and what we didn't, um, how do you feel about the little, um, like, remember, uh, like, the, like, remember this from episode one stuff, you know, like the, the, uh, um, it's not called review. I forgot the word right now. The recap. The recap, the the recap, recap. exactly. I think. I think the recap is really useful because especially as the thing is, I think, you know, in the first season, if you did, uh, if you did something like that on episode five, okay. Yeah. Maybe it's a little bit helpful, but as you get into your second season, mm. your third season, your fourth season, and you're having to rec and you're referencing points from scenes one, two, three from, you know, about various different characters to go, remember this guy, remember that it's going to be so much more helpful. I was, I mean, um, I, like, I'm kind of disappointed by this because it takes kind of away from the who, what's going to happen, you know? I, I already know when I see the recap, I already know what's going to happen. Yeah, I get what you mean. There is almost like, it's it's almost, it's obviously the, the series does a lot of foreshadowing, mm. but now it foreshadows before it foreshadows. Because, <laughs> yeah. you, because you go, oh, that guy's coming back. The guy with the things <laughs> from the first episode. Oh, that guy. Exactly. I hate that. By the way, I hate that. The guy. Mithral. Do you hate that guy? Yeah, we we got to talk about the Mithral, who has no name. <laughs> we just call him by the race. It's fine, but that's that's how Star Wars is, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, first question goes out to Garrus again. Um, what what are your initial thoughts on the on the episode? Um, I think it takes the. I mean, obviously, in episode one, we saw the action taken up a notch, and this again, I think, carries on from from that. Um, so, uh, that was, yeah, that was incredible. The, the, um, the effects have gotten a lot better over the, over this, in this season compared to yeah. the first one. And I think, um, and I think that those, uh, that the effects are really, they shine, um, in, in this episode and, and, and the use of the, the, you know, the, um, the, the backgrounds, uh, um, LED wall, you mean? The LED, the LED walls, you know, that's that's coming into its own with this. Um, but um, yeah, obviously, it sets up a lot of stuff. Um, it's like, oh, that's what they're going to do with it. I think everybody thought, you know, I, I mean, I, we're all obviously spoiling everything. Yeah. You know, by the way, people, it, this is so. a spoiler talk for the for the ones who don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, for me, I, I had assumed that you know, when when they got hold of Baby Yoda in in episode three or four, you know, when he's brought mm. back in the first season uh, when he's brought back by Mando that um, that he was going to uh, that they were going to clone uh, baby Yoda, yeah. you know that there was mm -hmm. that it was a G, because it's a Geonosian um, science guy and yeah he has, he has a, the, the cloning symbol and uh, it was yeah. a coming no a coming no in sign not a, not a Geonosian <laughs> Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Don't no. worry. I'm just because because <laughs> Geonosis are, is the planet where uh, where we have, which we see in Attack of the Clones and the, the oh, planet yeah, where the yeah, Death yeah. Stars build. So it's uh, that's where Camino. that's where all the shit goes down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Camino <laughs> is like in the middle of the ocean, isn't it? That's the yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Sorry, C the Camino. And so we uh, so I had assumed, and I think a lot of us assumed there was going to be some kind of cloning going on, but actually it's more uh, it's it's used as like almost. You know, this is the Captain America <laughs> injection that we're going to try and, you know, inject midi chlorians into, pe in, into, yeah. into people and see what happens. It's a su super um, Jedi serum. So it was quite, it was, that was quite um, alien, alien four. 
<laughs> just seeing the people in the test tubes and stuff. Yeah, let's, you know. let's not let's not, um, let's not give not too much away, but like just just keep it more on a superficial level, Gareth. Yeah, sorry, sorry, but I, I think well, I guess um, I, I guess the the it it seems like an episode that is purely like it's an action episode. You know, it's called the siege, and it, and and that's and and it's you know yeah. it, it is all guns blazing and that sort of thing. But actually, what it sets up is a lot of stuff in terms of driving the plot forward from stuff that was set in in motion from episode mm-hmm. one of season one. So uh, actually, it's a very important episode. It's, it, I think it's deceptively important yeah. in a way, um, in terms of you know the, the crucial moments that happen in this episode are only are very mm-hmm. short. You know, um, but yeah. Yeah, um, James, what are, what are your thoughts on the episode? A lot of what Gareth said already. <laughs> um, the action is definitely another level. Um, that could easily have been in one of the, the last films, like in the sequel trilogy, you know, um, with the vehicles and the dogfight especially. We'll come on to that later. Yeah. I thought the dogfight was yeah. awesome. Um, but yeah, like, I guess it's it's what anyone would want to do if they were given the chance to direct mm. an episode of Star Wars. Yeah, it, it seemed to have like a little bit of everything. And, you know, Carl Weathers kind of put his put his character front and center, didn't he? Yeah. Um, in a lot of it and interacted with the baby and in the way that everyone would want to. Um, yeah. There was, there was great stuff. And then I, lo- I love the action as well in this one. And I think it's kind of like felt like an eighties action movie. It felt like, uh, not that modern, but it was like more like this old school action buddy comedy. And I think that that gave it a real, real cool touch um, throughout the whole episode. Um, so let's uh, jump right into it. So the, the the first episode picks up where the last one left off. So we were basically in that ter- territory. So we don't see any like time that that we don't know about. And I think that's really good. So we have um, we are in in the story at every moment basically. And the ship is still in a very bad shape. And then we have this very very cool scene. I really love this one in the beginning um, mm-hmm. where. They show actually how much the child and uh, Din Djarin are a team. How did you guys love the the wire scene? I've watched it over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> and then and then and then and then I sent it to my mum, mm. and I was like, "Mum, it's cute. I know you hate Star Wars, but come on." Um, yeah, no, it's a great scene. Um, I. I think, I mean, um, I think maybe part of this was because I was watch- I you know, rewatched it mm. today and I rewatched it with earphones. But I think in the second season they've been using Baby Yoda's breath a lot sonically to to, to communicate. Yeah, you know, he knows how he how he's doing. He knows mo- more words, right? Like, That's like in, the, in that way. Yeah, yeah, like they're using it as an expression mm. and stuff. So it's like. <laughs> like when he's struggling or you know or he's like or you know they and they bring it in when he's like you know wants put someone to pay attention to him you just suddenly hear this <sighs> so um yeah i really like the way that the that breath is used in that and then obviously the babbling and 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 the way that they use his his babbling so that there is this <clears throat> there is this conversation that goes on between the two of them and I, I don't think it's gone on in quite the same way, quite the same way, up until this point. Mm. Where you know he, he'll, man, it's it's sort of closed questions, obviously. So it's a yes or no answers, but you do seem to get those back from maybe what this, mm. that, you know. So um, yeah, I think um, I think it's it's a good scene in terms of telling people, okay. Uh, this is how clever Baby Yoda actually yeah, is. Yeah, and it was... He's not... Act- Sorry. No, no, just say, a baby can't do that. Yeah, but it, I think... <laughs> but but I, I would say still that he, he recognized the whole thing, but he didn't understand what, what the man wanted. I mean, he could tell the red and, like, the blue apart, at least, but he didn't know that where to, where to put it in the end. And it, I mean, the, the the Mando, he was, like, more, like, saying, yeah, put put it where the blue one was, but... He kind of, kind of like technically, I think you could argue that he got it, but um, yeah, I think there was, I think it was just that that he so it's saying okay, but his cognitive, yeah, the cognitive element of his intelligence is is you know still very sort of primitive. That, that's true. That's point. true. I mean, it's all about food for him. <laughs> 
as it is for most of the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, it reminded me also a lot of the scene we have uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 where Groot, baby Groot gets explained uh, how to deal with the bomb. And I think that was like a real nice touch to put that in there. I don't know whose idea it was, but I think it was like really well put and a funny moment, um, the, the whole explaining. But I also love that he kind of like, as I, as I mentioned at the beginning, that he includes him in, in, in his work, in his like in his daily routines. And I think that is a very, uh, again, a very interesting parenting moment here. And like, I, I don't know if you noticed, Gareth, but we, we are putting parenting on a high pedestal here on the podcast. <laughs> Since we don't have kids, that's that's the only kid. That's the only kid I'm gonna get. So, <laughs> is that, I mean, I would imagine that parenting is. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I no, I, I agree, and um, and I think, and that sort of buddy ship <laughs> between them, um, you know, it's it's starting to get to like obviously he's a bait. Obviously he's a, he's young. He's a child, but it's like it's almost sort of a ham and chewy sort of thing going on here, really. Mm. Uh, in terms of um, helping each other out, you know, in with with Han and Chewie, it, it's get Chewie to do the heavy lifting with with Mando and and the and so the child. who's Han and Chewie here in get, this case? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's get him to go into it. Sorry, what did I say there? No, it's, like, <laughs> it's no, no. You're you're right, but yeah. it was like it was more yeah. about like yeah. who's Han so, and Chewie in this scenario. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like. It's it's the the um you know the person you can actually understand use it <laughs> because you can hear them speak you know you understand their words and everything um uh, is using the uh, has the other as a as a you know yeah like a mouth mouthpiece like a, a mouthpiece. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah that was that was really interesting to see and also uh, speaking of trust and friendship they have which uh, after that scene they sit together and drink together which was like really interesting to see james and i do you, do you think there's still the trust uh, there's more trust to gain even or do they have this kind of trust i mean we see the the, the mask opening up that i think that's <laughs> that's just incredible yeah yeah that's a big that's a big moment isn't it really um because uh the child has kind of been left, um, you know, cast aside almost. It's like you stick, you go there, like closes the door, and then Mando go about goes about his day. But for them to be, you know, sharing moments such as taking off his mask, like that's that's huge. at least partly that's, right. But that's yeah. obviously, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, you know, he didn't take it all off, but it's it's a it's a big moment to show that uh, that kind of like movement from from what we saw in the last episode. Um, that he's, you know, he's prepared to do that. He feels comfortable with the child as, as you know, as the clan that he would, mm. you know, even lift it up and drink with someone. Um, yeah, that's that's a really big moment. And the way that Yoda kind of looks at him as well, like, sorry, it's not Yoda. <laughs> the child looks at him <laughs> is, uh, is, is lovely as well. Like, looks up at him. It's almost like, oh... That's this. what that's what daddy like, looks yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he just eats his food. Like, <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> well, I thought that was uh, that was super cute and uh, yeah, an important an important part in their relationship. Yeah. Gareth, you you wanted to tag on that? Yeah, no, I I I I I, I, I totally agree, and um, you know, I, <clears throat> I think it's gotten to the point, you know, we understand more and more that that. Even though Baby Yoda, we know that in some ways he can hold his own. He is completely sort of dependent on, mm. um, and like even though he can walk, he's still like, kick me out. Yeah, yeah. So um, he still has needs. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I think he's fascinated. You know, I, I, I'm sure. I, do we do, do we think that Baby Yoda actually knew? <laughs> now, I'm sure we did think that Baby Yoda knew that there was that that wasn't that that wasn't. Mando, you know, what's his Din? Din, right? yeah. Sorry, I'm, yeah. That Din actually isn't like a robot, mm. you know, with a metal head. With a metal head. Yeah. That actually, there's a. It's not like a. Oh, you have a head. And <laughs> but I think, but I think, still that I mean, he's a force user, so he definitely knows whether he, the hat, the, the 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 helmet is on or not. I mean, I think he can feel through the force. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I, I was. But yeah, um, but I, I also think that this is sort of, uh, again, we talk, I mentioned foreshadowing and I think, you know, we could well see 
you know, he's mm-hmm. done it to here. Will we see him take his uh, his helmet mm-hmm. off? You know, completely later down in the series or in the, or in series three. Um, you know, yeah, that's that's a question. Seems, it seems like an important step towards that, doesn't it? It seems definitely like they're foreshadowing that for sure. Yeah. And obviously, and with the previous episodes, the, you know, and and the discoveries he makes about the clan that he actually exactly. was that clan. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 they keep their helmets on, but real Mandalorians don't do that, or or you know, Mandalorians don't generally yeah. do that. So he's learning a lot more about his um, about the cult about yeah. The I think culture in I think totality. I think there's a balance more moving over to that uh, perspective of uh, hey, it's not that bad taking off the helmet. I could at least do it like with the one person or the the the, the one um, mm. being that I trust. Yeah, and I think that's that's a that's a step in a direction that we might see him uh, like drifting away from the from from the watch basically, or from what they are they're teaching. Didn't the actor uh, was it Pedro Pascal? Um, he, uh, I thought that there was a rumor that he he'd gotten a bit fed up of wearing a helmet. I know that I, on a sort of related. I, I didn't I didn't hear related, that, but, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I heard that as well. He was here. Yeah, he, he just wanted to do voiceover. He just wanted to oh, do okay. voiceover and let someone else put the helmet on, basically. Yeah, but I um, think yeah, they, but, they, he could be nominated then for anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's all about awards. Exactly, exactly. In the end, it is it is what it is. But yeah, that, that was all a really interesting scene and right in the beginning, and uh, gave us a lot of uh, information and a lot of um, stuff that we can work with, uh, especially looking forward. And um, then we move off the planet right to Navarro into the uh, armors workshop, armory, and uh, where all the the the, the uh, covert lived. And I think that was that was really interesting to see. Right in the beginning, uh, we see uh, this really uh, this this really bad looking walrus man again, the Aqualish. And the, the Aqualish Raiders, they re, they started ransacking over there, and they had like a little base set up, and uh, that was really interesting to see. And then uh, the, the the first thing um, they like to try to share the bounty or whatever, and then they have um, this little uh, this little they call it hello little friend, <laughs> and it's a red eyed lava meerkat, and the lava meerkat uh, is is really interesting because the stuff you don't see is uh, you can see it only in a concept art. It is that it has like a fire breath and that it must be some kind of organ with chemicals that it, that it can like uh, do this kind of way. And we've seen the creatures before. They were part of the, um, of, the uh, of episode eight, chapter eight, uh, where, where you can see them in, the, in, the, in this little, where they went down the lava river and they were, you could see them on the side there with the little rice oh, pop, really? uh, ice pop up. So yeah, it was like, that was the first time we were introduced to them. And now we see one up close, which is like really interesting to see. And I really loved uh, this little pet tidbit there we have because this, this keeps going on because then we have some really, really cool action by uh, um, Gina Corano the, because... Um, she is she's coming in and we can hear the aqualish talk about her as the marshal and it's not the first time that we heard heard uh, about the marshal and i think the concept of marshal is really interesting in the outer rim um james what are, what are your thoughts on on uh gina carano popping up as the marshal um yeah it's good it's um <laughs> i think someone <laughs> showed on youtube that I mean, obviously she does all her own stunts, which is great. But there was like a stunt mat really, really visible in that scene. <laughs> like, mm. if we slow it down, it's really, really obvious. Well, um, it's not the only thing in, obvious in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's uh, that whole role of the marshal. Um, you know, obviously played a part in episode one. Uh, it's a big part of like keeping like outer rim planets you know, keeping the law. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a big part. Um, but yeah, we kind of, we see over the course of this episode or towards the end, you know, maybe she's having thoughts about uh, where she stands and, you mm. know, what she's going to yeah, bring. What her purpose is in that regard, right? Uh, um, Garris, you want to add something to that or? Yeah, yeah. So uh, in, in the, well, in the first season, because a lot of this, in the first season, a lot of the episodes are sort of based on, on the idea of, um, 
on, on, on like samurai movies and 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 and, and such, mm-hmm. right? And and this season, it's it's more like cowboy. It's, it's you know, it's it's westerns. Um, so having a figure of the marshal and you know, like like basically being a sheriff, you know, the sheriff about mm-hmm. town. Um, it, it all helps play into you know this is what we're doing here. We're we're, we're referencing this now and and doing that, doing the doing uh, you know, it's almost like it's a like it's a sci-fi pastiche of. Like this season is a sci-fi pastiche of samurai movies. This season is, a, I mean, it all feeds into what George Lucas did with the original Star Wars movies, really. Mm. Um, so, um, but yeah, and that whole scene is is very. I just thought Zena. <laughs> obviously, she's got that kind of Zena thing going on, but but um, it was it was particularly Zena. It was it was like mega Zena. Yeah, that, I think um, it sh- showed her. Like her strength in, in in terms of acting, she's not the greatest actress, but uh, she can do definitely some good action scenes, and I think that like suits her strength, and I think they should put put her in that. <laughs> um, yeah, af- after that scene, we kind of see the planet coming in because we we're back with the uh, with Din and the child, and it goes towards uh, Navarro, and uh, we see them land, and the ship is still. It's in such a bad shape. And we see Grief and Kara wait for Din. So that was really good to see. And uh, Grief... Um, Grief basically... Uh, like, we have this little scene where, where where the Mando has to jump off his own ship because, like, the, the, the loading ramp doesn't, like, go down. <laughs> which was uh, interesting to see. And, uh, yeah, basically they start talking and then um, Grief... Like, that was, like, very weird for me. Grief said, "Yeah, yeah, I get my best man on uh, on the on the job because uh, the ship needs to be repaired." And we see those two guys. First of all, <laughs> why are they? Why why are there his best guys working right there? <laughs> why? <laughs> those are really your best guys, Grief. Really? <laughs> it fits <And> the narrative. <laughs> that fits the narrative, I guess. And but I think the the only but... cool thing was it had like the the little reminder uh, in terms of the outfits of like the old Kenner figures uh, back then. So that was like really cool to yeah. see. Um, but yeah, Gareth. Both, both best and worst guys, because they are in fact the only guys that he's got um, to do that job. Yeah, and it was like it was interesting. They already right in the beginning, they looked very sketchy. I, I mean, this this one dude, yeah. he was like yeah. looking back, and he was like, "Oh, oh, I know this guy. I've seen him on the wanted poster by Bottleneck." <laughs> <laughs> if I was and, and it, in, I would have been like, "No, I'm not leaving my ship with those guys." Yeah, they look so sketchy. Yeah. It's like when, 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 the, you know, when they leave the ship and and you see the uh, the the you know the engineer um, looking back mm-hmm. at them. It's like I've been here before. I know how this works. Don't trust <laughs> that guy. That guy's gonna. And then you, and you spend the rest of the episode going. When's this gonna pay yeah, off? Yeah, right. But but interesting. It was interesting that uh, uh, we we get distracted right away again by a grief cuddling up with Baby Yoda. There was like there was like one of the cutest moments that where when he got like right into it and I was like yeah. he was like talking to him. Does Mando treat you well? Oh, he said yes. He said yes. <laughs> that was really uh, really cool to see that uh, they did this little bit there and uh, there was like a really cool parenting moment again like questioning his parenting because like we know where he comes from and grief also knows where his parenting comes from or being a father in, th- in that regard and i think that was really, really cool to see that he sees some things have changed for him i think also though um you can see i mean obviously obviously so much of the acting that that comes from din um, I'm going I'm gonna get. I'm gonna learn the names by the end of this episode. Um, but obviously, you know, expressions and stuff because there are there are no facial expressions and whatever. But through the play with Gina, um, the Mando is understandably nervous when Baby Yoda is taken off of mm. him and held by someone who, in the end, you know, we know everything that happened in season one. Yes, he made good, but. Mando's still nervous, uh, and and that again is another parenting aspect. You know, super protective mm. um, and stuff. It's like, can this guy? Yeah. Can I trust this guy? I know he came good at the end. You know, I know he came good a little while back, um, but I'm still anxious, and I don't like the letting this. You know, my 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 child. Yeah. and I, th- I think that. <laughs> out of uh, yeah, uh, but I think it's going to change though. In 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 the end, I think we will have something uh, um, like what we will talk about at the, like later on in the episode. I, this this kind of trust 
towards him doesn't change, but I think the trust in general, because he also gives um, um, Pelimoto uh, the, 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 replay for, the replay of Tatooine, how I like to call her. Uh, she, she, like, she gets the baby right away. I mean, like, she takes it, and, like, you know, but he basically trusts her, but I wonder why. But um, I think he, sh he has more trust with uh, Grief Karger and Cara Dune, obviously. But um, so, yeah, b b being like through so many events, especially Cara Dune as well, you know, and this was like really interesting to see. But uh, what I really loved is the, 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 the set pieces again here using the LED wall. You, I think you could see it sometimes, but I think it was really interesting also that the city looked much better now. I think there was yeah. more going on. I think there was like really cool how we walked through that. Um, what 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 did, what did you like? How how did you like it, guys? I thought it was cool. I think it shows the progress, doesn't it? It shows what can happen if you if you kind of like free up free up a town. You know, it's, it becomes alive, and they obviously show that through there being education there now. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was a really nice touch to have the statue of IG Eleven. In the background, yeah, that was really great. Yeah, that was that was cool. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't catch it on the first view because I, I was so concentrated on the dialogue, which I what you want to talk about in a second. But I I had it, I, I saw it only on the second one. Yeah, yeah. That, that was cool. First time I when I I kind of like saw it, but I didn't real I didn't it didn't twig that it was a statue. I was like, why is why is there an IG droid like hanging outside of a shop or something? <laughs> and then it made and sense. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the second watch was like, it's just that. <laughs> do we think it's actually? Oh no, because he blew himself up, didn't he? I was going to say, yeah. do we think it's actually like? Does it does it actually contain the parts, or is it just an effigy? Mm, made of, you it, know? It, Maybe they could have one bit that didn't. But yeah, 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 yeah. It, like, yeah, it looks kind of like it looks kind of like it's like a uh, like from different materials. You know, they 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 put it all together, like like okay. a Frankenstein esque statue. I don't know how that art style is called, but yeah. I'd love to see that, like some concept art for that, or like yeah, a, right? you know, if, if it was a prop or anything. I I, I don't think so. I think I think that bit was all LED wall. Yeah. So cool. maybe there's like a digital marquette of it. Maybe. Yeah, there must be like a three D render of it. Yeah, but which was uh, th this part was very interesting for me when you look at the uh, um, the way uh, we we uh, we hear grief talk about the new republic, and that he doesn't think very high of the new republic, and especially looking at what the difference is between the core worlds like Coruscant and like the mid core, and then looking at the outer rim here. And like this class difference, and I think there's like really interesting concept throughout Star Wars, like the the, the the movie trilogy as well as in the Mandalorian here, because we get a lot there. And Garrus, what did you think when you heard this the the social constructs of this galaxy? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think um, well, he's right to distrust them because we know where this goes. Um, but but uh, I think, you know, our experience of the Outer Rim, I think in a previous, you know, in previous Star Wars content is is that there is, um, that the rules are a little more lax out there. Mm -hmm. So any any uh, event in which, or any, um, or the threat of, you know, extra rules being put in place is going to get, their backs up mm. so and that's what it does with grief so. yeah. yeah especially with his background as well you know he, yeah. he, he's never been like 100 percent with the rules he's not that kind of guy yeah he likes to um, bend them it's obviously a little bit of a changed guy now but he, he likes to he likes to be fluid with the rules shall we say mm. Yeah, but uh, what I really loved then, uh, there was like a very nice moment for me, <laughs> that they turned the bar that we had to fight in Chapter 8 uh, into a school, which was really cool to see. And the concept the concept art looked really cool for it. I really liked the concept art. I think I liked it even more than the actual result from uh, uh, that they put in the show, which is also cool, though. And they had like the, the tables and everything and the, the Ikea-style boxes in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was cool to see, and then we had um, also the 
um, the the protocol droid, the CP uh, the the C three PO like protocol droid that explained a lot of geography. We 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 heard some uh, something about the ha Hadian Way, which is explained in Clone Wars, and like like as a travel route, and that was really interesting. And where the where the core worlds are, and like like the where in relation where all the planets are, and I think that was like really interesting that they teach this kind of stuff in school and. Um, uh, what how, what did you feel like being in a galaxy far far away in a classroom? I mean, I think it had a bit of um, you know, it had a bit of was it is it episode two or episode three where you see some some teaching going mm. on with baby with, with with not baby Yoda but actual Yoda yeah 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 um, teaching and and that's um, when and and stuff so there was a bit of a callback to that yeah there was a, uh, Attack of the Clones when Obi Wan lost his planet and then he goes to find yeah. find yeah oh the planet because lost he, he, or he has or something like that yeah because <laughs> someone erased it from the archive exactly um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's a bit of that going on, obviously, uh, and um, and the droid is is using a uh, it's it's a classroom, uh, you know, a class board, but it's it it looks exactly like the ones that they use in you know in war in the war rooms mm. <laughs> um, during like New Hope and, and all of that. So um, that's mm. cool to see, and it's cool to see that it's as if as if those sort of maps get used in all sorts of different purposes. You know, it's the same. They use the same. They use the same uh, PowerPoint. Equipment. You know, uh, pardon? Hellboy. The PowerPoint. No, power, <laughs> PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Same one. Hellboy? <laughs> Hellboy? Yes, Hellboy. Yeah. Anyway, um, Did you see Hellboy <laughs> taking the lessons in the back? <laughs> um, but I think I think that's um, it's well. That's another well-building aspect as well. It's like you know, seeing these kids go to school um, is uh, is is world-building. Um, and then it's depth. Mm. Um, you know, it, it's a scene that serves a number of different purposes, uh, even though it seems almost just an opportunity to make Baby Yoda look cute again. Yeah. Um, uh, and, it, and it successfully does. Exactly. That. I, I want to jump on that. But Gareth, maybe you explain what we're going to see there. Yeah. Uh, well, basically, um, Baby Yoda is, um, is uh, sees someone eating what looks like a macaroon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I call them and, I call uh, them blue blue them. milk macaroons because they they would fit with the blue milk they they drink. Yeah, it's and 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 the blue drink the the blue milk and and the blue was it is it made from a krill the blue drink that they the spotchka you mean um, the spotchka the clear one yeah 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 spotchka mm. yeah. why is everything blue um so uh, no the, yeah it's um so he sees another kid eating these the, a packet of these macaroons and and wants one because he loves food mm. and um and just just gestures with these just these babbles but it's like uh is he gonna give it to yeah, me yeah and he like pulls his little hand and out like, give me yeah and it, well, he goes meh i swear he goes like me he's like give it to me like meh and oh my god I just, again i've watched that scene over and over and over and over and over and again i sent it to my mum stop uh don't laugh um <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a really it's a really delightful scene, but you get more out of it than than I think. I like the way that 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 this rather than being rather than there being just lots of exposition and stuff. You know, the way that they tell mm. story is actually through uh, sneaking it into scenes that seem to be doing something else. Yeah, and you know? it is also the first time that we see him in in this in this season. Not the really first time. He had like the little like with the eggs where he pulled the eggs towards him in in the second episode of season two. But it's actually the first time that he actually used his powers to his full full extent in that way. And I think that was really interesting to see that. I I wonder if he has more control now because it like cost him a lot of power when he was doing things. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and and the fact that he you know previously when he's used his power, mm. um, I mean obviously the the eggs again the the eggs are another are, are a different reason but well, they're the same reason because he wants to eat but in the first season he uses his power almost exclusively when bad things are happening yeah when when his when his yeah. father is in danger basically yeah is in danger so uh, but but using it in different ways to heal mm -hmm. you know because he's trying to close the wound yeah. um by uh, stopping the 
rhino thing that I've forgotten the name of. And, uh, and <laughs> the mud horn. Um, that's what I said, yep. And, um, <laughs> but so, and, and it's just now, because he can, now he's, as, as you say, maybe he's getting a bit more control of his powers and, and, and whatnot. Um, but he might just be growing as well, you know, as a, you know in terms of strength. Mm. That's um, the thing, he's, he's getting all of this food and it's, it's, it's obvious, isn't it? It's like, the thing is growing. He needs food. Because... I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Yoda, the Yoda species is not growing that much, but it's growing. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, he's it's obviously needs, up. he is going to be like next season. You're going to see him with little weights, and he is going <laughs> to be snapped. <laughs> um, so yeah, but, but developing him as, as clearly a little cheeky bugger, uh, yeah. you know, because he's like when the look that he gives the kid when he's stolen his his. Uh, Macro is just like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. <laughs> like if that if that guy or you know that kid had just given him one, you know. Yeah, right. Where was his Where was his problem? I I didn't get it. Yeah, right. But yeah, so, yes, yeah, so a new little guy in the classroom. Yeah, say, everybody, yeah, everybody loved well, him. Well, exactly. And also interesting, yeah. what we didn't touch upon was like in, in the beginning, he was like very uh, the demando was very reluctant to leave the child there. Again, and but yeah, it, super protective. everybody was like, "Trust me, it's gonna be fine." But he was very trusting. I think I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would have trusted. I, I mean, he trusted a droid as well. That's another thing. Yeah, exactly. Was in right? control. Oh my god, I didn't even compute that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, leave, yeah, leaving it with the droid and leaving like basically being far away from him, and, and like in mm -hmm. terms of like when everybody's like complaining um, and saying uh, he he's seen worth uh, worse. Basically, it's like I don't know. I mean, what well, then? Then you could bring him, <laughs> but for obvious <laughs> reason reasons we know why <laughs> because we've seen the episode. But yeah, um, moving on from that, uh, they went. Uh, can I just okay? I just sure. To just, just uh, no, just a, a general point about the way that Baby Yoda so Yoda so far being being used. Yes, okay. There's a little bit of story development, as I say, you know, and developing the relationship between Baby Yoda and Din. Mm -hmm. But it seems it seems to me that it's they're saying, look, okay, yes, you're only getting him in a cute way now, but he's going to get some more he's going to actually have some shining moments like he's we still only see him li very little within the, within the within an episode mm -hmm. you know we've seen him for like in that's in this episode probably five minutes maybe yeah but he's he's uh, also he's, it, like 40 minutes? he's always very cute though when he comes up <laughs> so i think we're going to have some very baby yoda centric stuff coming up um and hopefully we'll get to see him do more in terms of you know yeah flexing his power exactly so um moving on to the office of griefs and grief has like a very cool office because he's like the the, the like he does like what was a, cl a clerical work or something like that clerical, clerical work, work yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh around the planet so he's basically the the, the mayor and uh, uh, Cara Dune is his, uh, his uh, enforcer in that way like the, the the police the sheriff of the town and um, yeah, they're moving on to that, and then we see an old friend of ours that we uh, know from episode <laughs> one, and he's just called the Mithril again, played by Horatius Sands. And like the one of my favorite moment was when he like lets loose this kind of gas, this mist. I love that. I wonder. I wonder, I wonder what it, it, it was. It, <laughs> it was like basically the the Mithril equivalent of pissing himself, right? Yeah, yeah. It was fear. It really just. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I, I, and, that was and I good. Thought, Why don't you like? Did, you did like that bit. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I just I think the character is terrible. <laughs> I already hate. I really hate. But the why? Why do you hate him? Uh, I can't explain it. It's just something about it's, him. Like it's, it's just like, little... like a little bit too like oh like ooh, ooh. you know it doesn't quite fit like. Yeah. I'll tell you who he reminds me of a bit. He reminds me of Paul Giamatti's uh, character in Planet of the Apes. <laughs> right. You know, the, the, yeah. Tim Bur the Tim Burton one. Okay. Just, just, and, and, and not that that movie is like incredible or anything, because it isn't, but it's just, but I think it's just, 
I think I see a lot of Paul Giamatti in the way that this character is, you know, the character you can't trust. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, who's there is a bit of comic relief, but could also just just knife you. Yeah, <laughs> but it's also it's, it's very interesting that now we get a lot of backstory from uh, why why the Mando was hunting him, and uh, we get some stuff explained how he's connected to Reef Carter, and they kind of have like a like a like a, a love hate relationship. I would say they're like they're kind of buddies, but but they also they're not, which is like interesting. Uh, it's, it's, it reminded yeah. me a little bit of like Rush Hour in the like in the beginning of the movie, basically when they didn't like each other, but they still had to do some work together. So that was like kind of cool to see. And He's just tolerating him. That's exactly how I treat him as well. <laughs> just like, oh, not this <laughs> cock again. <laughs> <laughs> but also uh, interesting was when we had a really cool uh, Han Solo reference there when when they're talking about the or when he doesn't want to go back into carbonite again because he still can't mm. see out of his out of his left eye. And uh, that's really interesting because we know from Solo uh, when he comes out of the carbonite he can't see at all. And um, that was like really, a really interesting fact. And uh, again, we have a connection there to the whole universe and see this pop up. That was really interesting to see. But at, at this point, I'd really like to, to raise, um, I'd like to take this opportunity to raise awareness of carbonite poisoning. Um, <laughs> yeah. Causes blindness. Call this number 1 800 carbonite. <laughs> 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 yeah okay yes the it it's it's yeah it's a serious thing so yeah please it's please clean. do give and yeah, yeah we'll, we'll leave a number yeah. at the end please okay I, I will put it in the show of course um <laughs> then that's why i'm wearing glasses that's why me and gareth are wearing glasses <laughs> oh okay yes. yeah. god I, I don't have any i have only sunglasses i'm sorry guys well, you haven't been putting carbonite yet, have you? Yeah. You're a good guy. Yet. 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 I wasn't hunted yet. <laughs> I I well, just I just you. acquired you assets. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, <laughs> hey, this that was like a little fun fun thing because I um I, I told my like the sneak because uh, um, I'm hosting the sneak preview here at the local cinema and I talked to the to the guys and I told them, hey, I I, I have the child now and I posted a little photo in there and then some people said. Hey, uh, you should give him to me uh, because he, he can't stay at one place at the whole, at the same time, uh, like or for long or whatever she she wrote. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'll move him around the apartment. So, <laughs> 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 yeah, diff different room each day. Exactly, is exactly. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't he can't be tracked that way. And when you and when you go out, you need to leave the radio on. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and the fridge open, of course. Yeah, and the fridge open. Yeah, <laughs> I'd lock the fridge. <laughs> yeah, he, like he's gonna force pull it open. I don't know. So. <laughs> but yeah, um, after the, after this little get together with the Mithral, which was interesting, um, they get the new mission and uh, they talk about uh, a base, an Imperial base that looks very much like the bases we know from Clone Wars, which was really interesting. And um, we also see some very cool artwork for the base. I think that, that that looks amazing and it's almost one to one the same image that we can see in the show, ending up in the show there. That was really, really cool. And um, yeah, I think there's a lot of motivation there to save the planet for Grief Carter and especially also for uh, Cara Dune, who has no purpose in life. She didn't know what to do after um, after uh, she she deserted, basically. She was hiding, and now she has a purpose again, and uh, stuff she couldn't do for Alderaan um, that she tries to do now for a different planet. I think that's really an interesting motive, and I, the, the Mandalorian definitely sees that and um, tags along in this in this mission. And I think also his honor and fighting for his people plays an important role for that. What do you guys think about that? I think that... Uh Grief is doing it to, for, for multiple reasons because he talks about being a tra the, like the key trade route or something like that. He, he yeah, he wants like to be a, a hub, a trading hub, a trading hub. Um, so it's like you know, not every nobody is is one hundred percent bad or one hundred percent good, mm. but for a few exceptions. But no one's <laughs> no one's one hundred percent good or one hundred percent bad, you know. And he, it's like yes, of course he he wants to do it to to ensure that the the you know that the 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 planet is no longer oppressed, mm. but he also has financial motivations. Of course. Uh, you know, so 
Um, I think they're all doing it for slightly different reasons. Mm. Um, but I think overall they have like positive motives. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. I, I generally, but but it, it but it's like he's still making his money somehow. You know, you, well everybody's got to earn money, but you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> but I wonder what where the money uh, leads to. I mean, since he's basically the mayor of the town or of the planet, um, he probably funnels all the money that comes in into the planet and making it this a better place to live. I think that comes in the end, like, is in my book a good thing. <laughs> Even though he's, like, on a gray area there where he, like, operates, but... Do you think maybe he's, like, the tax collector in Peter, in uh, Robin Hood? Mm, no, that would be... That's too... That's too... That's too... That's too dark. No, he's, he's more on a, on a bright side there. He's doing good. He's doing good in that in yeah. that planet. Um, but I'm sure he buys himself some fancy co like coats. Yeah. But I think he. I do. I do think that uh, just the general. Point, I think he always just bets on whoever's winning. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you know true. What I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, that kind of guy. With whoever's winning, it's not. It's, yeah, he's a he's a know, bandwagon like, um, bandwagon fan. <laughs> what's the thing in? Uh, you know, I know we all. Uh, I know some people love it and some people don't. But in the Last Jedi, where it's where. Um, Benicio del Toro's character. Yeah, Benicio del Toro's character is basically, you know, that's what he does. He's, he's, yeah. it's not, it's, he's not like a, it's not necessarily like a gun for hire, yeah. but it's, it's just, you know, as I say, you, you pick the winning team, yeah, he, whichever that he, is. He goes with what suits um, him best. And I think, he, I think he may, you know, he could turn out to, you know, yeah, lose the character development that we, that we've, you know, we've come to believe in him, and and we, and he might lose that. Um, it might mm. be a mask sort of thing. Mm, exactly. Who knows? So after after the mission briefing, they finally head to the base and uh, to like the door. And I think that was really interesting to see. We see that like a, like a X thirty five land speeder, like which ha like has the like kind of Luke vibe uh, to that, which was like really cool to see. And um, they have like they have some cool conversations. Like uh, grief is actually knocking off some of the sentence, and he's like very very worried because he needs this humidity vest to survive out there, and some really cool like fun facts. And it was like really cool banter that we could see in this. Uh, this um... I, I feel like it's more more BS from him though because he does that in the in that first episode. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly. Toilet, and I think it's just like none of. All of, the amount of self-interested people in in the of characters in this uh, in this season in 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 this um in this series. Yeah, it's I think it was it was really cool back and forth. I loved it, and uh, he like plays scared. But I think he is though also, but uh, no, he is genuinely scared. But yeah. he's coming up with reasons why he can't do what they you know mm. what they want because mm. he is really scared. And then they always play this joke like he he doesn't want to help. He just always wants to get back uh, like back to the, the to the city and but then like. Grief Cargo makes him do it, and I think that's really cool. And then they try, they slice the door, try it with the uh, with a with a flinch cutter or whatever it was. They try to get in. That was like really a really fun scene. And then the Mando just basically has enough of it and says, "Oh fuck it, fuck fuck all of this talking." He he just kind of jets up to to like to the to the to the platform, to the landing platform there, and. Uh, executes all the stormtroopers there, and then one falls down. It was like really fun moment there. <laughs> Probably not for a stormtrooper. That, I'm trying to think what the well that's a that's again a bit, that's a bit of a callback to the first the sec, what second episode or first episode of this season where where he where the, the second episode where he picks someone up and, and drops them. But also it's it's a little bit um, isn't there something like that in Deadpool as well where, where people just get dropped uh, from the top of the very high. I don't know. Yeah, do, I'm trying we, to think. There's another thing where where people just sort of. Rain. Yeah, we had we had a lot of stormtroopers <laughs> falling down. It was like also in in episode four with Bo Katan when when they dropped it on the ship. That was also a really fun moment with the stormtrooper there. So, yeah, that's uh, that's nice nice touch there. And um, then they then they get up with the with the um, with the elevator and come up and see a Trexler Marauder troop transporter, which was like very very geeky toy moment. Like, oh, this, this this thing I wanted. This is worth so much for collectors. Can I have it, basically? And it's like that was I, I was reminded as a poster collector, definitely. Oh yeah, this is this is the this is the the kind of moment as a as a. Were you I, your ISO? Were you? Yeah, 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 definitely. So, yeah. <laughs> so that was fun, and we we've seen this this trans uh, troop transporter before. It was in chapter eight, and. Uh, 
uh, where Moff Gideon came, like brought up the the new troopers in from the, from this base, so it has to be connected to that one. And I think that was really really cool, fun little side note. And I think this is this is gonna it's a toy, right? This is yeah, it's a toy from yeah, yeah, and they got yeah, or they gonna make it a toy in in that regard because I think it's a toy from like the, from from and from. Yeah, I think it was one of those yeah. toys that, that that was put out by Kenner. Yeah, the Kenner. In the yeah, 80s. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, exactly. And then this kind of moments, we we see sometimes those moments that where where you feel, oh, this needs to be a toy, or this needs to be an action figure, and to have it, and I think that's that's a really cool thing. And then yeah, they, they get into into the uh, base, like into the inside of it, a very imperial style. We see lots of stormtroopers there. And uh, yeah, this is like really interesting to see what happens uh, inside the base because there's a lot going on. They're gonna go to the to like the the like security dude or whatever it is, uh, and uh, they steal a coat cylinder because this is one of the things you can see the officers have in their shirts, like those those little round thingies who look like big pens, like sticking out. For most of the people, they didn't know that it was coat cylinders, and you can get there only by like uh, uh, having those and get like to to more secure areas. And I think that was really interesting. And then they're gonna keep on moving and get to the first door where they where the coat cylinder obviously comes in handy. We have a little bit of shooting, uh, which is interesting, and then they are at this, this, um, the, the this core at this uh, like power core uh, with the lava going on, and then they need to shut it off. And they send in the Mithral again, and he's complaining about there are no god rails. And this is like a joke from uh, Family Guy, I think it was uh, from one of the Family Guy episodes, and like it's a joke throughout like all of Star Wars that there are no <laughs> god rails, but. I think there's going to be a callback like a little bit later. I'm going to talk about that um, and uh, where a guardrail, where we where we can see how important a guardrail is or not. Um, that was really cool to see. And uh, they finally find a research center. And this research center center is incredible because we have a nod to the Last Jedi here. And, uh, how how did you guys like it? Even for for the ones who didn't notice in in the background where we can see those those vats or those those tanks because it's not the first time we see vats in the Star Wars universe. I mean, Luke has been in a clone and a Bacta tank or an Occulto tank, and um, he uh, we can when we see those tanks, we hear the Snoke theme in the background. So that def definitely has something to do with Snoke, and I think that's really interesting. I didn't know there was a what what in the music. Yeah, the music. In the, in the, episode. the music. I didn't spot that. Yeah, that's a little little fun fact there. <laughs> do you think that's just a, to, a, a? Do you think that that's actually something that will pay off in terms of link to? Well, I suppose yeah, it would have to. Yeah, it has to. I think in, in terms of that, it, uh, they don't have to say that Snoke, but I think they will explain this cloning process or what they're going to do with it to, at some point. So, and then I think it will yeah. link in with the movies, obviously. So Snoke at this point is uh, was he? Well, Palpatine's in Exegol at this point, isn't he? Supposedly. Yeah, that's that's um, that's the like... only problem because at this time, as you said, because uh, we are five years or six years maybe after um, the battle, uh, the second, the the, de the destruction of the second Death Star, and by this time, also um, Ben Solo should be born, and. Snoke had, like, that's what it says, actually, in, in the movies, I think it was, uh, that Snoke had his eye on Ben Solo since he was born. Yeah, so, that was in the comics. In the, or in the it? comics it was. I think that was in, yeah, there was I think it was in Kylo, like the Kylo comics. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, that's, um, that's one of the things that is not working out time-wise, if that's Snoke, or if that's just some, some sort of bodies that they try to make it better, maybe. Or Snoke gets, uh, or Snoke is a conscious that could also be, like transferred or some so some sort. That's um, in, in different bodies that like the body has to be renewed every time. But I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm sort of wondering if they're going to go down that. I, I I just don't know if they're going to go down that route of of linking it to those films. I, not. I mean, I personally and possibly uniquely enjoyed them, but. Um, um, not so much the last one, but <laughs> the I, I just can't see if they're going if they're 
going to actually look to the future in that way or whether they're just going to, you know, bring in everything that comes in, everything from like Clone, Clone Wars and, and also um, the first three mm. or first six films. Um, yeah, I, I don't know too much yeah. to, what, to what extent they're going to do it, but I think they, they, def, they I mean, they already bridged some tie-ins to that. So, I mean, speaking of, okay. speaking of Boba Fett. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I don't. I don't think they'll introduce Snoke or any. You know. I don't think so either. Directly reference, yeah. even. Um, it's just interesting that they would put that piece of music or that those tones like. Mm. And it lo- in there. And it looked. It's, it's a. It's a considered. You know, it was very much focused on that tank, and then you got, you know, those undertones. Yeah, and it looked like it looked like it definitely. So it was interesting where they're going to go because this, I think I, I'm going to come back to that where where it might come in later on and um, yeah we, we get after after the tanks we get the message by Pershing that the doctor from episodes one and three uh, chapter one and three and he talks about an M count which is definitely the metachlorian count uh, of a being which is like comes in the metachlorians again <laughs> and we go yeah I, I, I don't know if it was said, when they said M count I don't know if that's because metachlorians became like a bit of a punchline and it's like so we'll call it the m count and, and, and we'll just hide the fact that we're so, is in ob, it's obvious that that's what we're talking about but i it's mean like trick if you, but, but the, maybe the, the but maybe the imperials call it the m count and the jedis just call it really cool. yeah they're so so <laughs> rational and cold <laughs> yeah but yeah, that was really interesting to see. And he talks about trans, uh, transfusions of blood. And it sounded to me like they want to get some normal beings to be to have midichlorians to manipulate the force. And uh, I, will, I will jump later on when we're at the end of the episode back to that because I um, also remember that people. And uh, then finally we get to the point where, the, where Din finds out that Gideon is still alive. And I think that's really interesting. Uh, for him because he didn't hear what happened in the cockpit and he didn't see the transmission in the cockpit from the Bo-Katan episode. And um, yeah, that was um, really something. How, yeah, how, that, that was something that I completely missed in the last episode. I I totally forgotten that he wouldn't have seen that transmission. Mm-hmm. Or, I, like, I wonder why he didn't hear it because the other guy was they were like fighting not so far away from from them steering the ship but i think there was more dire dire things going down but yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah um <clears throat> that was a really interesting as you said and then after that we have a lot of stormtroopers coming and some cool fights and i think that uh, was really cool to see and then they find out that okay yeah mando we need to split up because you need to get to save the child and then he definitely does that, and he uh, finds a different way, flies out of the the the, the core, people shooting at him, and then we cu- then we come back to the guardrail joke because we have this guy with the guardrail. He gets shot, falls over the guardrail right into the lava pit. So people, that's the reason why we don't need guardrails, anyways. <laughs> I was surprised that that wasn't a Wilhelm scream. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was listening. I was like. When I saw him go, I was like, that's going to be a Wilhelm scream. And then it wasn't. And I was like, really? Re- really? Good old classic. I, I, don't know. I, don't, I don't know if we've had a Wilhelm scream in, in, in Mando. I'm not, I don't know. But, I, I don't yeah. think so. I, I don't think we did, but I'm not sure. But I heard it. But that was, was that would have been that would have been the time to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and then yeah, he he the Mando jets off and the others try to escape as well in the Trexler Marauder we see in the beginning because it comes in very handy. And then for me, it was very much the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> what did you guys think about that? <laughs> I, I, it, at various points, I got vibes in that in this um, episode. I got some solo vibes from the like when the you know the train and yeah. Um, so um, so I got a bit of that there. Um, what else? I mean, I don't know about. I don't. I've, I've not. I'll admit now. I have not seen any of the uh, Fast and Furious movies. But um, but just those. Obviously, in this case, they're stormtroopers. But it's like you know, whenever there's a creature hanging on the side of a car, yes, you're going to ram it against the. You're going to ram it against the, the mm-hmm. sides. You know, 
you're just screaming at the TV. You just 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 bash against the side. Yeah, yeah, they, um, yeah. That was really cool. I, I liked it when 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 they had the chase, and I liked it when the the speed when when the troopers, the scout troopers of the, on the speeder bikes, just follow them. It's very badass, and then they crash into each other. Oh my god. That, yeah, I mean that that's another. Th I mean, there, I know that there are numerous points where they make out. You know that that of course, even though most stormtroopers are, or, or you know, a good deal of stormtroopers mm. are just clones of uh, are, are being clones of Boba Fett, but some of them are dumb, and they there are them at different moments where it throughout all of Star Wars where they try to make out. You know, they're not they're not all that up there, and <laughs> and I think there was just and I think the seeing them yeah crash into each other is just like a yeah, that you know. Yes, this is really cool that they're coming off a cliff mm. and whatever, and it's all very and it's all very the um, buffalo stampede in in Lion yeah. King. But um, <laughs> but but actually, they 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 they're not all that. Yeah, but it was really cool. Um, I really enjoyed it, and um, that that they did that, and then the the chase. I mean, we had some cool uh, shooting by Grief Cargar, who was like they they all were helping each other, and they were all equals on that in that matter. And uh, uh, you could see again that the action set pieces they turned out really great when the tie chase um, came on, and we had like four ties chasing the Marauder, and they could actually gun one down, which was really cool to see. And then it fell right on a gun, so that was like also really interesting. <laughs> griefs, um, griefs moments there. Uh, it, it obviously being just straight up Millennium Falcon, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's just. This is what we're doing, guys. We're doing the Millennium Falcon, the you know, uh, gun bit. That's what we're doing. Mm. Here. <laughs> you know, and, and I, but I was, I was there, and I was enjoy and I enjoyed it. So yeah, it's fine. And I also enjoyed <laughs> it when we when we basically thought it was over for them when they were in the open. They didn't make it to the city. The 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 Mando and the child comes to rescue. I love the little bits when he was flying and the child was like waving his hands in the air, was like all happy about it. I think that was like a really cute moment. And uh, yeah, then the, the 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 final the final ship when he gunned it down, the, the the sequence was really cool, like the flying, it was really great. Really, really enjoyed that one. And the the best part in the end, obviously, when we come back to a, one of the parent, parenting moments, the baby puked in the back of the car. Basically, <laughs> now he needs to take care of it. He he can't go for a drink. He needs to take care of the baby. I laughed so hard at that. I really did. Yeah. Like, and it, proper out loud laugh they just, they just did it really well it was just because he was so eagerly yeah. and then it was just the silence of him and the blank face and it was just like Bleh. and it's just completely like a child that's been to the fun fair is eating all the popcorn mm. and, yeah. and all the candy floss and had a burger yeah. and had a drink and whatever and then but has gone on too many rides yeah. um and it's a baby group. Exactly, again, right? exactly. From Guardians of the Galaxy 2 when they jumped through the 550-something 500, portals or whatever it was. And yeah, it was, that was also when they puked. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought the whole like action sequence was, was good. Um, the way they did mm -hmm. it with Mando like splitting up, it, yeah. it sort of added a little bit more pe like peril into it as well. Yeah, we could focus better. Usually if you've got Mandalorian, um, you know, in a, in a dog fight, he's obviously going to come out of it. But it was a really good decision to to have um, Kara and mm -hmm. Grief just on their own because something could have happened, you know, that that added yeah. something to it. And then the dog fight was brilliant. I think that's one of the best for me, yeah. one of the best dog fights that they've had in Star Wars. Yeah. It was just really yeah, was good, really well done. Exactly. And um, after that, uh, it, the Mando takes off to find Ahsoka finally and. He, we can see the New Republic following up on what happened, and we see uh, two X wings again. So it must be um, a, a Teva uh, and Trapper Wolf back in action, and we only see uh, uh, Teva here in action. He's checking in what happened with the base and so on, and then he tries to get Cara Dune back on board, and uh, uh, like talks about Alderaan and like. But I mean, it's uh, kind of stupid question. When she bit, when did you lose? Anyone yeah, in come on, dude. <laughs> really? No, they they left. The, they went on a holiday to a different planet just before yeah. that shit went down. I was like, oh my god, really, bro? <laughs> but yeah, so that that happened, and it was like really interesting to see. And then it comes to the really really interesting part because we see. Um, uh, we have a nod to the regular Star Wars openings uh, from from the movies. We see an our Quinton's class commander cruiser 
which is similar to kind of ships we've seen in Star Wars World before. And yeah, this ship is built on a Kuwa drive yard. It's a light cruiser class ship, and it was used by the Empire for patrol ships, especially in Outer Rim and uh, for space combat. So that's a good reason why Moff Gideon has this kind of cruiser. And uh, yeah, then we see uh, a, a, like a command bridge. We can see the guy from the beginning again, the mechanic uh, we talked about, the sketchy looking one. And uh, he <laughs> is um, basically telling them about the Mando and that he put a tracker on the ship. And I think that's really interesting to see um, that, that, that they have sp still have contacts and still have spies who want to work for the Empire. And yeah, then Moff Gideon comes into play and uh, basically says, "Yeah, so we are we we are ready. We we can we can face him. We can track him. We can see. So I wonder what what will happen next if he wants to go and find Ahsoka, have another Force user, maybe to draw some blood from. That would be interesting. Like to follow them and have a showdown. They could also in, in, in include the dark saber in this in this way. And I think that's uh, yeah, really interesting to see." Um, in terms of what Moff Gideon wants, first of, first of all, before we focus on the rest of that see, uh, scene, what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, I, I just, well, I, I didn't even think about that. The, 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 the fact that they might take blood from Ahsoka. I, I, I just, I don't want them to take blood from anyone. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not to say that people shouldn't give blood. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh i feel like the way that they're doing it, the, the way that they've done this season it's like is this is the final episode going to be just massive is in like we go we're doing little bits here and there all the way along and then it's going to be bam it's well it's actually going to be obviously this had quite a good action sequence but i think i still think episode 1 of this season tops it Mm -hmm. um, because that the what's it crate dragon yeah. um, was just unbelievable, um, and uh, so is it sort of going like this, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of the season? Does it go like that? Um, you know, is is it as I say, is it is it leading up to these bits, and, and you wonder how are they going to tie this all in one episode? I do. We, I know you've talked about timings before about like the length of episodes mm. I'd be uh, do we know what the length of the, the episodes to come up? I I just I just heard it today I don't um, I don't know if I should spoil it or not for the people I, I know the title and the, the length is the length a spoiler I don't know for people maybe it is I don't know I don't want to get people riled up but okay I'm just gonna people but, here it comes I'm gonna say something turn it away for 10 seconds and then you know just the time. Yeah. Just the so time it's that I'm gonna do the title as well. The title is the Jedi, obviously, and uh, the length is 46, uh, 45 minutes. I'm oh, sorry, 45. Okay, so that's significantly longer than than the first, than the previous few episodes we've seen. Yeah, is that um, the next episode yeah. or is that the last? That's the, the next, next episode. episode. Yeah. Oh, so it's definitely I, gonna be Ahsoka then. Like, exactly. But it's yeah, but but it's like could the last episode be an hour thing? Yeah. I just yeah. feel like it's going like you know and and will. I know, obviously, it's, we've teased like Boba Fett and we've teased Ahsoka. Are we mm. going to have? Uh, is uh, are both of those yeah. characters going to be involved in the final episode as yeah. well? As, I heard this. I heard this know, great theory that uh, the other day that uh, they want to basically have Mace Window survive the whole thing, and then Mace Window is still somewhere training, training in the back, like like uh, like in his exile, and then uh, then he's the Ahsoka is going to lead the child to uh, Mace Window, and. Boba Fett tracked the Mandalorian the whole time and Boba Fett kills Mace Windu. Surely Mace Windu's flown out of a window. I mean, Boba I, Fett I has really been swallowed up by a Sarlacc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I really hope that isn't the plot and you haven't just given away the rest of the season <laughs> because I will come to Germany and I will get <laughs> if, you. if that happened, oh my God, I would be... <laughs> so do we, think, do, do we think that Moff Gideon... Uh, does he himself uh, want to become um, a force user? I does don't he, think does so. he want, Does he want the blood? Do we does think he, he is force experience? sensitive at this no. point? No. That's why he has a dark saber. That's what I mean. Is he just like stealing all of these? Yeah, I think he was. He, because this is when when what the last bit comes in. We see this Darth Vader looking like troopers uh, in in the, in the extended universe and legends. That's called the dark the dark troopers or purge troopers or when it was before. 
and those troopers are used to be like robots but here it looks more like an exoskeleton or like an like a darth vader armor and the the are the kind that uh, gideon wears and i think if yeah. they want to take blood and make uh force sensitive soldiers in that regard and put them in those suits i think that would be i think that's that's where they're trying to go but i'm, I'm not sure on that but i think that's that's my theory here yeah I think it'd be interesting either way, really, because if they were droids, then we've we've got the thing again where Din is obviously scared of droids. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's that's correct. Yeah. That might come back to like haunt him. Um, but again, the, the idea of having an army of these sort of like half human ish machines, mm. like loads of Vaders, almost mm. that's that's a really cool idea. Yeah. And I think that's where the, the cloning... The, such a good reveal. Such, such a good reveal. I think that's where the cloning comes in as well. When you have those people that are that that don't have like a, like exactly. a, like a strong physical appearance, but have the midichlorian count, half the force, yeah. basically, and you put them in these, that could be very, very powerful. Yeah. You might as well use them. If you've yeah. got them in tanks, you know, you might as well bung them in a costume. Exactly. You've got it. Blunt it. You've got it. Blunt it. Yeah. <laughs> If you don't use it, you lose it. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what they told Moff, and he was like, all right, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get these we've, what we forgot to talk about was, like, when we were in the base, obviously, I forgot to mention the guy with the 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 guy with the, with the shirt and the watch and the jeans. <laughs> I just want to throw it out there. I've probably a bunch that, of people seen it already. So many jokes about it, but I think it happens. It's like the like the Starbucks cup and stuff like that on, on other shows. That we do. So, do you think that they'll go back and take it out? Or? They might. They might. Yeah, my friend was saying that. He was like, "Oh, I wonder how long that will last on Disney Plus yeah. now." Yeah, like what? I mean, isn't it? It can't be that expensive to do that. Yeah. I think they will do it at some point. But yeah, it was still fun, fun, fun little bit. But yeah, um, coming back to the end, I think it was like really cool reveal, and I think that brings us very much forward in, in, ter in terms of the story. And we had a lot of parenting moments, as I just, as, as we just mentioned throughout the Wyatt talk, eating and drinking together. Um, he cleans them up. It was very much a, a lot of parenting there mm -hmm. going on again. We have also some, some armor moments that we talk about here. Um, the comparison to the ship again, like, like they all don't look very good, but also we have, um, the jetpack moment and the, the blast, the blaster proof moments that when he gets shot again and nothing happens. And, um, yeah, and this also goes hand in hand with the Mando tech we see. We don't see any cool Mando special things this time around, but, um, flying with the jetpack is the most. Just uses the yeah, jetpack a lot, doesn't get, it? Yeah. You say, is, is this the first, did he use the flamethrower? No, he did not. He, he, he had used it in every single episode. He did? Up until... Against the right Did you use it the previous one? I don't think did so. The previous no, one? I don't think so. So, I think up until the what the, he does in that the spiders. Yeah, he does. Spiders yeah. episode. Hmm. He, but I think he might have used it in every episode up until hmm. that point. Okay. He's, he's pretty. He's like, pretty out of gas now. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. yeah. He's probably. Yeah. He needs to go get some butane or whatever. Yeah. I guess. I guess. <laughs> get a loads of lighters, little lighters, and just pour he it is, in. Um, he needs to go to home base. <laughs> Well, I thought they'd have had one on the bar right by now. For yeah, it's not not there yet. The 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 the, the Hadian way. They've got like Hadian. The Hadian way didn't get it there. <laughs> but yeah, I think overall it was really cool. But and, and now I want to have you guys' opinion and how would you rate the episode, James? You start out. Um, it's kind of similar to last week in that it was good from a narrative point of view it has some really weird pacing like on the myth roll <laughs> you and your myth roll yeah. <laughs> it was kind of like the beginning the pacing was a little bit off yeah. it was just like oh, the, by the was, way there's one more where we go yeah, there's one more thing we didn't mention cara cara dune aka gina carano and her problems on the outside world but um <laughs> yeah, I, I think we'll just we'll just yeah I, i'll it. just i'll just i just wanted to mention that so people if you want to find something out uh you might not like then google what gina carano does in her free time and wants to let you know um yeah i, I don't particularly endorse her views and yeah, um me neither. They've, they've, they've got it in a place where you know they could actually write her out if they felt it necessary because she looked at the new republic badge um yeah. and it could 
very easily cut to the next season where she decided, yeah, the New Republic was for her. And she dies and she like dies on Hosnian Prime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From not wearing a mask. Uh, no, Ald- Alderaan style. <laughs> on Hosnian Prime, you know. <laughs> oh my god. And, and it does feel, you know, she's with grief and it's like, it, it seems like that could, you know, she's not they, do, they could do nothing and and write her out. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. let's write her out and and again I you know I yeah I'll good, her, I'll good. Her, her words but um, in in the real world but is in a, if you didn't see her for the rest of the season I don't think it would matter. Uh, yeah. And she was like there was a lot of marketing around her all the early stuff like when we didn't know anything about the Mandalorian. Mm. She had her action figure um, and stuff. I, yeah, yeah, she was like all the early ranges. It was like, oh, she's going to be a you know a, a big part of it. Mm. But we haven't really seen that much yeah. character progression. Really, speaking of not much seen that too much, uh, all the trailer material is gone now. By the way, we've seen all the material there was in a trailer, and now we are in oh. unknown territory. So yeah, get get. I think. I'm oh, sorry. No, I think I think this is where uh, a lot of the stories that we've seen are going to start to like converge a little bit. Um, I think that kind of happened in the last two episodes of last season. Mm. I think, um, but hopefully, with the stuff that we've got already, things will start coming together next episode. Mm-hmm. You know, with with Filoni yeah. at the helm as well. You, you you'd certainly you'd certainly think yeah. so. I think I think this episode, like I said, narratively has opened up a lot of interesting. Mm-hmm. A lot of things too. It, it brought us forward by miles now. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Last two episodes just like shot us forward. Yeah. Uh, how how did you rate it? Did you say that already, James? Um. So, uh, similar to the last week. Uh, last week, seven uh, seven point five. Okay. Cool. Okay, Gareth, uh, your rating. Um. I should have spent my time considering that whilst you were talking to me. <laughs> uh, I mean, I would tend to agree, uh, James. I think it's in the sort of, I think it's in the seven. Oh. Uh, but seven is good. 70% is good. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. fine. Um, <laughs> so um, I really enjoyed it. I'd, I'm really keen to see more from Baby Yoda in, in a way that's not just, oh, look how cute he is. Force powers. Or, Force powers. Yeah, for, not, just force, not just force powers, but, but yes, force powers. But but I feel like but but story out of mm-hmm. you know is in you know you yeah. know where has he come from? Where is he going? Okay, yeah, it's like Cotton Eye. <laughs> Cotton <Joe>. Eye. <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> we're not going to reference anyway, them. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't deliberate. And then I was like. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> no! No! Anyway, but it's a bit, yeah, I, more story out because I've I've had gotten, you know, I, I think during the first season I thought you know it's like we have got two stories. There are two, you know, there are two potentially two almost two protagonists mm-hmm. here. You know, there are two people who's who have got stories going on, yeah. and I feel like Baby Yoda. I mean, you could say that obviously that the relationship developers developing between him and Mando is a, is a story. It, yeah, it is. But everything has been about Mando. Yeah, so yeah. Far, and really. I think that's yeah, that's uh, also and I've, we we got some someone at part and uh, he got some some new motives and some some new information that leads to definitely something happening in the future. So I'm really excited for that. And I would also give this episode uh, I think last week I did also 8 of 10. I think 8 of 10 is uh, is a good Good there. I, it's it's not my favorite episode of the season, but I really enjoyed it. What is your favorite episode of the season? Uh, so far, I have to say, I think Bo Katan because I'm a very Mando nerd and I love how it's all tied in with the whole universe and all this maritime stuff and fighting. Loved it. All right, James. Um, episode one. Yeah. Yeah, that's where that's where I'm at. Just because of, I, I, yeah, I, I just think, I, I was just Creed. wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expect I wasn't expecting a massive creature. I think maybe I'm yeah. just maybe I just like maybe I just like flashy lights and <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know I mean maybe I just like 
bells and whistles and stuff, but I just wasn't expecting, you know, yeah. uh, there to be a big creature it or, and and there to be that kind of uh, scale mm. yeah. uh, event happen within because it's very person focused. I mean, Star Wars is generally quite yeah. person focused. Like, exactly. You know, and and you know, uh, George Lucas described it as basically a soap opera. So. Um, <laughs> So, but yeah, I, I, it just blew me away that first episode. Yeah. Um, totally, totally understand. Okay, people. Then thank you so much, Gareth, for hopping on uh, on a little short notice, but you uh, made 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 yourself very proud here. I'm, I'm proud of you, how you handled the whole Star Wars adventure here with us. And James, thank you again for co-hosting with me. And next week we will have none other than Matt Ferguson on our episode. He will talk about nice. the, the, the big the big one, the big one, I think, for everybody. So I'm excited for that one and to talk about that one. And I will see you all next week. And uh, follow us on Instagram at DropMacOfficial for more uh, news on uh, on Star Wars and the Mandalorian, also on the Movie Poster Podcast, and subscribe on YouTube, obviously. Okay, thank you guys. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah, later. Bye. This is the way. Have I given up house? What was it? How are we ending this? This is the way, was it, right? This was the way. Okay, I don't care. We're out, people. That that was the way. <laughs> we are.